Hi everyone, you are watching Quick and Kosher Unwrapped. This is a total behind the scenes making of the best, holiest, most delicious bread in the entire world, challah. And I have my great friends and colleagues with me. This is Hadassah, Mrs. Pink, and this is Tamar. Everyone say hi. So you guys know, so we, these are the people that make the website run. This is, these are the people that make Joy of Kosher run. So I just want you to meet them and be together. Sathya is behind the camera, Sathya wave. Show your hand or something. You're awesome. <laughs> Any of you, if you've been to like my events, you probably met Sathya. You know him. He's wonderful. We're now in my kitchen and we are making challah. Right, ladies? Mm hmm Okay. Look alive. Look alive. Okay. We start with active dry yeast, okay? This is two ounces. Ooh. You know what, Hadassah? I need you to follow. This is a world-famous recipe. Okay. Okay. It's from my cookbook, the first book, Quick and Kosher. Recipes from the bride who knew nothing. And like, you know how there are some recipes people come up, they're like, I love this, I love that. There are like three recipes in this book that everyone goes, I'm sick, sorry guys, today, that everyone goes crazy over. Ooh. I need my tea. Khala is one of them. Okay. Chillin's another one of them. We'll make a video for that. And um, let's have a honey chicken. That's like huge. People go crazy over those three. So anyway, I've adapted it since though, because like I can't just like, you know, sit back and do it exactly as it says. Okay. So we're going to do it a little bit different. So we'll sort of call out what the measurements are and then I'll tell you like what I do differently. Okay, sure. So first I start in this recipe in the book, I don't proof the yeast, but I actually do now proof the yeast. So we use two ounces of active dry yeast in a bowl. So proofing it, what we do here is we take about very informal, like wooden spoon, one or two spoonfuls of sugar, Put that in white sugar. In the recipe, I think I also use brown sugar, right? Should I say that? Yeah, right. Brown sugar. So I use white now. I am obsessed with whole wheat things. I know tomorrow's a nutritionist, okay? She everyone makes everything whole wheat. I'm totally obsessed with it, but um, my husband likes white, so I've got to make white for him, okay. right? You guys have to do things like that. It's do you same. make whole wheat tomorrow? I do half whole wheat for my follow. Oh, okay, fine. It's the same in our my house. Husband is fine. 100%, but he's fine with the half. He's fine, yeah. And what about you? If I made whole wheat challah, nobody would eat it. Except for me. You can make it and bring it I'll over to me. Hadassah lives about two blocks away, so if you're into making two batches, I'll make the white for my family, yeah. you, you make the white for okay. yours, and we'll, we'll all split the whole wheat. We'll, we'll split the whole wheat. Okay, so the recipe calls for six cups of water total. We're using two cups to proof the yeast. You want it hot like a baby's bath. So I had like started making challah before I had a baby. So I'm like, what the heck does that mean, you know? So like lukewarm. So I actually have instant hot here, so I do like one cup instant hot and one cup room temperature, and that gets it to about the right. Want to touch? Yeah. You make it all the time, you know. Put, yeah. Put my finger in. Yeah, yeah. We're, yeah, we're eating it. We're all friends. Yeah, you want to be able to touch it. Yeah. You want to be able to touch it, but you want to feel yeah, warm. I want to feel warm, but not too hot. So you, how would you Perfect. describe that? It's good. It's a little bit hotter than lukewarm. Okay. But. We're going for the lukewarm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, a little hot. But fine, we're good. Okay, two cups in here. So I'm just sort of like using the back of my spoon. So have you ever tried this recipe with any whole wheat? Or always? Never. Because it's such a, it's like hours to make. Yeah. So I feel like hours to make and then I really want to eat six pounds on my own. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's like I have to make two batches. But maybe you could try it and put it online. It. Yeah, it's such a good call. Okay. So we work this. Put this on the side. And we just cover it with a kitchen towel and let it rise while we do the rest. Let it. So I use four heaping mama tablespoons of kosher salt. Not regular salt, kosher. So this is a two tablespoon measuring thing. And then I always just put in a little extra for good luck. Okay? I take a six pound bag, right? See stuff? Six pounds. Everyone always calls me like, I can't find a six pound bag. There's five pounds, there's six pounds, there's seven pounds. So there is a six pound bag. Otherwise, I think it's four cups to a pound. I take this and I just pour it right in. Have you ever halved it already or made that? Never. I know. This is it. This is like, it has to be just exactly like this or it won't come out. You know what I'm saying? I'm no. the same way. I'm the same way with yeah. mine. Yeah. You, it, it's it's perfect. You don't mess with perfection. So, no, and but I leave over. Sometimes I have an extra loaf if it's just us for the family, like, you know, for just for us for Shabbos, and then I use it as sandwich bread during the week breadcrumbs, French toast, I'm saying 101 things, challah kugel, I freeze it and make challah kugel, we should do something, we'll do a video for challah kugel, that's a good one later, okay, six pounds in here, what is next, sugar, right? Yeah, yep, two and a half cups. I so say that says two and a half cups of brown, I now use two cups of white and then plus those little two tables, those are two wooden spoonfuls that I used in the, um, with the yeast, so this goes in one cup, 
evenly across the top, and then the second cup. This is like the white refined recipe, right? <laughs> Sugar, flour. You make it totally different for me. Oh yeah? But you know what? They're both just as delicious. Well, me. you'll taste and then you'll tell me. Uh, you, Are you yeah, I will. Okay, fine. Okay, so what's next? Let's remember. The yeast. The yeast. Okay, okay so fine. So the yeast, we're doing the egg. So we did the yeast. So now we have the egg yolk. The eggs. Okay. okay. I hate cracking. I only use yolks. Wow. Why? That's because how she gave me the recipe. And I really, I was thinking now, like I might start to experiment and try the full egg and see. Do you use full eggs? Yes, I do. How many? Three. But I use five pounds of flour. I right. Do, I don't do as big. I always do much smaller flour. Right, but you use the full egg? Yeah, I always use the full egg. Right, so I just use the yolk. And I remember someone... Her daughter was allergic just to the white, so she called me up for this recipe. She's like, it's so exciting, you know? Before it was before I printed the book. So we'll just take the yolk out. Okay, so here. Next, we'll say we make a well in the middle. So this is the well. So this is going to be our yeast that's been proofed. Plus, we're going to add four more cups of water because it's six total. So let's see. Okay, so look. So it's puffing up nicely. Right, Seth, you got that? Nice little poof. Mm -hmm. Talk to me so I know we're good, yeah? And I'm we pouring. Okay, pour that right into the well. Why? Because Basha told me to. Okay, next. So I use this little two-cup measuring cup, and I do my one-cup boiling and one-cup room temp to get four cups total. I think the warm water helps with the rising. You know, so definitely too cold is not good. When you're making challah, you want it not only to have the warm water, but you want to have a warm and toasty place spot in your kitchen for it to rise. So that's our six cups total. Now the next thing we need is canola oil. Now I think I say three quarters of a cup there, right? Yeah. Yep. I use at least a cup for this part and more once we get to the kneading part of it. This is it. Hands, right? Real chef uses their hands. We're just to start to knead this and pull this together. Now, a lot of people use a machine for their challah. I, you know I'm like the biggest shortcut queen, right? But like for challah, I, this is a time that you actually, when you're kneading your challah, that you can like dab and pray for your family, for your children, for people that need, you know, a shidduch, which is, you know, a match, a mate, people that need a refua to be healed from the sick. So I, I use this opportunity so I hardly have a chance to pray in my regular life as much as I would like. So as a wonderful opportunity, Arab Shabbos, the day of Shabbos, to just knead my challah, infuse my love, and daven for the family. So this starts to come together like this. You don't want to over knead. So it's like, I need about 10 minutes. How about you? Um, yeah, 10 minutes. Right. But I use both hands. Oh, yeah? I, uh, I, I, but I give it my all. Well, because you have really thin arms. Okay, so you right. need, I, one, one arm for me does it. <laughs> oh, really? You always use one? I always use one. I use this to move the bowl. Oh, wow. And I use the second, yeah. And I have a whole long list of people that I pray for. Right. So I need the time. I need the time. Okay. Right, 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 right. totally. So I need, I need the time to, to pray for them. And I think it's great. It's like 10 minutes of just totally. focusing everything into this dough. And it is a very spiritual experience. Yeah. And if you make challah, then you have the opportunity to participate. People call you all the time for like when, you know, there's really someone that needs something, you know, a, um, a, a refua. How do you turn it? Like? Healing. Healing. Yeah, they get like 40 women together. And everyone makes it specifically with the thought of that person in mind in a total and complete recovery. So, you know, I always use one hand. Maybe that's why my right arm is so much stronger. So, and as I put in each bit of, like, oil, I'm slowly adding the oil over the course of the 10 minutes. As I do that, I think about, like, each child and their name and what they need. And obviously, now that's pretty hard as Your I'm talking. Are you when you're doing it? Oh, my kids are crazy for making challah. You too? Yeah, they love yeah. making it. They were so upset that I'm making it together with you guys. So I'm like, no, but this part, they help me put everything in. The meeting is all about like me because I can't really get involved in that. But then after, everyone gets their own yeah. chunk and they make shapes and decorate with crazy things like sprinkles and, and uh, chocolate chips and blue, uh, blue food coloring or whatever they want to do. After just a few more minutes, I let it rest for a minute or two. Actually, no, I let it rest probably up to 10 minutes. And then I'll just do a final knead. Because when it, when it rests for like those last 10 minutes, it becomes softer and easier to work with and more smooth. We are going to put more oil on top. We're going to go crazy with the oil here. Okay? And we're going to let it sit. Disappear for one second. Oh, I can use this kitchen towel too. We'll reuse this. 
reduce, reuse, recycle. Coming back to it in 10 minutes. Okay. Okay, and we are back. It's 10 minutes later, so we've let this relax a little bit, so it'll be softer and easier to work with. Because you saw I was like really struggling before. Do we need more oil? Love you, canola oil. Can you use vegetable oil? You could, but I never do. Do oh, you? Um, I mean, it's like, you know, not confession no, time. Use, it's okay. It's no, all I, use, I use canola because that's generally what I have. Right. But if you didn't have. Yeah, canola. absolutely. Vegetable, not olive. So look, this is already so much softer. And I'm going to take it, press together, gently flip it. Beautiful. And now more oil. Wow. You're going to taste it. You're going to love it. You go somewhere and like so-and-so brings the chocolate chip cookies because she makes the best. So it's a, I bring my challah to every family occasion. We take our kitchen towel back over it again. So come stop. We're going to go over on this way. This is my warmest, darkest, coziest corner here. So my oven's usually going. My stovetop is usually going. So this is nice and cozy. We're going to take a garbage bag. Hefty. Do you do this? No. Oh my gosh. What are you doing over there? Oh, it must be a British thing. Oh, uh, yes, for sure. Either that or Canadian. Take it, cover your challah loosely. So you're taking the ends, guys, I'm showing you here. Loosely putting the ends underneath. This keeps it nice and warm and toasty, but you want some room for it to be able to rise. It's a nice loose cover. Now, in the book, I think I say half an hour punch it down. Another hour, punch it down. Another hour and then we're good to go. But really lately, I just do one hour, punch it down, one hour, then shape. See you in an hour. So we're an hour into this uh, rising process. So we're taking the bag off, taking the kitchen towel off, and look at our beautiful hal, it's risen. So I wanna just oil up my hands a little bit. Grease up, more oil again. And we're gonna punch this thing down. So see you go, all the air bubbles that have formed as it's risen? I want to get rid of those. So we call this the punch down. And gooey, nice and soft. This is good. Punch it down, get up all the air bubbles. Just work it for like a minute or two. And then we flip it and we start this process again. So ready? Take it. You're watching stuff? Flip it. And we are good to go here. Okay? We want this thing to rise now again for one more hour. Towel goes back on. The bag goes back on. Tuck it. We'll see this guy in an hour. So it's been another hour. We're going to pull this off and take a look at our gorgeous risen challah dough. Ooh, nice and fluffy. So bring this back. Guys, how do we look? Oh, wow. That's awesome. Nice. Okay, love it. So, this is when we take, because I made six pounds of challah, so anytime you make five pounds or more, we have to make the bracha. So, isn't this so nice? Oh, that's beautiful. Got it. I love it. So, keep it here. So traditionally people burn it. Do you burn your challah? I put it in the oven and I leave it there when I'm doing all my Shabbos cooking. Oh yeah? Yeah. So what do you do? Are you, are you not going to make five pounds? No, but I, I separate. I just don't right. make Right. And I, um, I, just, oh, I, right. I, I bake it like with the, um, with the bread. Like right. I, and then I just like, you know, throw it away. Right. So I used to burn it on the stove top, right? When it gets like black and like a charcoal. But now I also read, um, so obviously like consult with your local rabbi on this, but uh, I also read you can double bag it and discard it that way as well. This is the end of how to make your challah dough. Now there are gonna be a bunch of videos to follow this. We are making how to braid six braid challah. We're doing how to do like a crown round challah for, for Rosh Hashanah, for like, you know, the um, for Rosh Hashanah. We are doing challah garlic knots. You guys hungry yet? We are doing par challah dough cinnamon buns. Mm. And then we'll show you some other fun toppings. Fine, so watch all the other videos. So we want them to stay tuned, right? Oh yeah. Right. And where do they get the recipe? Joyofkosher.com. Cool. Oh, did you guys plan that? No. Okay, cool. Was very good. I'll try it again. You didn't like that? That was I good. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. Wait, did you stop? No, no, I recorded it. Good. So you want to do it again? Or? No. Oh, no, no, I'm good. I'm good.